One Story, The Priceless Lesson In a small town nestled amidst winding mountain ranges, life unfolded simply and peacefully. Within this town lived a man named Henry, a wealthy merchant always seeking ways to expand his wealth. Henry resided in a grand and opulent mansion, where everything around him was bought with silver and gold. He believed that money was everything in life, and that wealth could buy anything he desired. One day, Henry heard of a priceless gemstone discovered atop a high mountain peak. Driven by the desire to possess this gem, Henry decided to organize an expedition to seek out the precious stone. He hired a team of experienced guides and prepared everything necessary for the journey. Henry spared no expense, purchasing the latest and most advanced mountaineering equipment, from climbing gear to thermal clothing. After a grueling and arduous journey, Henry and his team finally reached the summit of the mountain. However, upon arrival, they were disappointed to find that the priceless gem was no longer there. Henry was furious and disheartened. He felt as though he had wasted time and money on a futile pursuit. In his despair, Henry noticed an elderly woman sitting alone beside a large rock. Ma'am, who are you, and what are you doing here? Henry approached and inquired. The woman smiled gently and looked at Henry. I am Jane, a former resident of this town. And you, who are you, and why are you here? Henry recounted the story of his quest for the gemstone and his subsequent failure. Jane listened and simply chuckled. Wealth is not everything in life, Jane remarked. The most valuable lessons cannot be bought with money. They are experiences and an understanding of life. A gemstone may disappear, but the experiences you gain will stay with you forever. Henry pondered Jane's words and began to realize that life was not just about accumulating wealth. He learned that true value lies in relationships, experiences, and self-awareness. From that moment on, Henry decided to return to the town and spend time with his family and friends. He used his wealth to support the community and help those in need. Henry's life became richer, not in material possessions, but in the joy and meaning he brought to others. The story of Henry and his quest for the gemstone serves as evidence that life's most valuable lessons cannot be bought with money. Initially believing that only money held the key to everything, Henry, through his experiences, learned the true value of life beyond material possessions. Understanding and experience are things that money cannot buy, and they are what truly enrich human existence. Henry's return to the town and his dedication to relationships and community support exemplify his acquisition of a valuable lesson from his journey. The conclusion of the story is that, in life, true wealth is not simply about money and material possessions. True wealth lies in knowledge, experience, and the ability to positively impact those around us. Two Story, The Guiding Light In the bustling city of New York, where dreams and ambitions collided with the harsh realities of life, lived a man named Michael. Michael was a hard-working father, dedicated to providing the best for his family. However, despite his efforts, he found himself trapped in a cycle of monotony and dissatisfaction, both in his personal life and career. Michael worked tirelessly as a middle manager in a large corporation, but he felt unfulfilled and stuck in a job that offered little room for growth or creativity. At home, tensions simmered as he struggled to balance his responsibilities as a father and husband with the demands of his job. One evening, as Michael sat alone in his dimly lit apartment, Weighed down by the burden of his worries, his young son, Alex, approached him. Sensing his father's distress, Alex gently placed a hand on Michael's shoulder. Dad, is everything okay? Alex asked softly. Michael forced a weary smile. I'm fine, Alex. Just tired from work, that's all. But Alex could see through his father's facade. You seem really stressed lately, Dad. Is there anything I can do to help? Michael hesitated, unsure of how to articulate the turmoil he felt inside. But as he looked into his son's eyes, filled with genuine concern and compassion, he found the courage to open up. I feel like I'm stuck in a rut, Alex, Michael admitted. I work so hard every day, but it feels like I'm not making any progress. I'm starting to wonder if this is all there is to life. Alex listened intently, his young mind processing his father's words. After a moment of silence, he spoke softly. Dad, do you remember when you taught me how to ride a bike? Michael nodded, a hint of nostalgia flickering in his eyes. Yes, I do. 
it was a proud moment for me. Well, remember how I kept falling down, over and over again? Alex continued. But you never gave up on me. You encouraged me to keep trying, even when I felt like giving up. Michael nodded again, a faint smile tugging at the corners of his lips. I remember. And you eventually learned how to ride, didn't you? Yes, because you believed in me, Alex replied. Dad, you've always been there for me, guiding me through life's challenges. Now it's my turn to be there for you. Michael was moved by his son's words. In that moment, he realized that he had been focusing so much on his own struggles that he had failed to see the support and love that surrounded him. With newfound determination, Michael embarked on a journey of self-discovery and growth. He sought out mentors and pursued new opportunities, both within and outside his career. And with each step he took, he found himself breaking free from the chains of complacency and rediscovering his passion for life. Years passed, and Michael's transformation was nothing short of remarkable. He became a beacon of inspiration for those around him, including his son Alex, who had grown into a confident and compassionate young man. The story of Michael and his son Alex illustrates the profound impact that love, support, and guidance can have on overcoming life's challenges. Michael, trapped in a cycle of dissatisfaction and disillusionment, found solace and inspiration in the unwavering support of his son. Through Alex's simple yet profound analogy of learning to ride a bike, Michael gained a new perspective on his struggles. He realized that just as he had guided his son through life's challenges, so too could he find guidance and support in those around him. The story emphasizes the importance of seeking support and mentorship during times of struggle, as well as the transformative power of belief in oneself and the support of loved ones. Michael's journey of self-discovery and growth serves as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the potential for positive change, even in the face of adversity. In conclusion, the guiding light highlights the invaluable role that relationships play in navigating life's challenges and finding fulfillment. By embracing the support of loved ones and fostering a belief in oneself, individuals can overcome even the most daunting obstacles and discover a renewed sense of purpose and passion in life. 3. Story, The Value of Life In a peaceful high school nestled in a quiet town, there was a student named David, a curious and energetic boy. During one class, David began to ponder the meaning and value of life. He gazed intently at his teacher, Mr. Robert, a wise and experienced educator. Sir, does life have any meaning? David asked, his eyes reflecting curiosity and skepticism. Mr. Robert looked at David with warmth and seriousness. David, life is like a collection of gemstones, he explained. Each gemstone holds its own value, but they truly shine in different environments. David was surprised and intrigued. So our lives are like that too, sir? Mr. Robert nodded. Exactly, David. Each stage in life brings new experiences, helping us to understand ourselves better and the true value of life. But most importantly, we must learn to enjoy every moment, no matter the circumstances. Feeling like he had a better understanding of the value of life, David thanked his teacher and left the classroom with a sense of joy. The story of David and Mr. Robert emphasizes the importance of understanding the value of life and how we can enjoy every moment in life. By using the metaphor of gemstones in different environments, Mr. Robert explains that the value of each person and each life cannot be measured or judged from a single perspective. Instead, the true value of life is expressed through our experiences, challenges, and actions in each stage of life. The conclusion of the story is that, to truly understand and enjoy the value of life, we need to open our hearts and be willing to experience everything in life. Every moment, whether in joy or in pain, brings us valuable lessons and experiences. Most importantly, we must learn to appreciate and enjoy every moment, as that is when we truly feel the real value of life. For rising above the pain. On the small shore of Fisher's Cove town, where gentle waves lapped against the golden sand backdrop, stood a quaint white house. Within that house lived a woman named Sarah, leading a quiet existence. Sarah was an artist, but since her husband's passing, she had fallen into a deep abyss of loneliness and seemingly insurmountable pain. Each day, Sarah spent hours sitting by the window, gazing out at the sea and painting memories of the sweet moments she shared with her departed husband. She didn't know how to cope with the pain, and with each passing day, 
she sank deeper into despair and solitude. Time flowed like sand on the shore, silent and unmarked. But one day, a mighty storm descended upon Fisher's Cove. Strong winds and heavy rain shook the entire area. Sarah felt as though her life was being swept away in an endless tempest. She woke from dreams of her husband only to see the paintings she had spent months creating being torn from their frames by the gusts, scattered like confetti in the fierce wind. Despite her fear and anguish, Sarah rose to her feet, determined to salvage her precious paintings. She dashed outside into the pouring rain, struggling to catch the flying scraps of canvas. The gale nearly rendered her immobile, but Sarah refused to give up. With each piece of art lost, she felt as though another part of her husband slipped further away from her. In the end, with sheer determination and effort, Sarah managed to rescue her cherished paintings. She lay face down on the beach, exhausted and in pain, yet within her heart, a glimmer of new hope flickered. After the storm passed, Fisher's Cove emerged into a new day. The sun rose brightly, and Sarah began to rediscover herself. She resolved not to drown herself in grief any longer. Instead, she would use her art to express resilience and inner strength. Sarah continued to paint, but this time, not just about the past, but also about the future. She depicted dreams and aspirations, and the newfound happiness that life could bring. She gradually realized that no matter how painful and challenging life may be, there always exists a ray of hope, a new opportunity to start fresh. 5. A life not as bad as you think In the heart of a bustling city, amidst the cacophony of honking cars and bustling pedestrians, there lived a man named Jack. Jack was an ordinary office worker, leading what seemed like an unremarkable life. He woke up each morning to the blaring of his alarm clock, dragged himself out of bed, and trudged through the rush hour traffic to reach his mundane job. His days were filled with endless meetings, monotonous tasks, and the constant pressure to meet deadlines. Jack often found himself feeling trapped in a cycle of routine, longing for something more meaningful in his life. He couldn't help but feel that his existence was devoid of excitement and purpose. But amidst the hustle and bustle of the city, there were moments of quiet beauty that Jack often overlooked. As he walked to work one morning, he noticed a group of children playing in a nearby park, their laughter echoing through the crisp morning air. For a brief moment, Jack paused to watch them, a small smile tugging at the corners of his lips. Throughout the day, Jack began to pay closer attention to the world around him. He noticed the vibrant colors of the flowers in the park, the soothing melody of a street musician's guitar, and the warmth of the sun on his face as he stepped outside for a lunch break. These small moments of joy began to punctuate his otherwise mundane existence, reminding him that life was not as bleak as he had once believed. As the days turned into weeks, Jack's perspective began to shift. He started to appreciate the simple pleasures of life, a hot cup of coffee on a chilly morning, a heartfelt conversation with a co-worker, or the comfort of his favorite book waiting for him at home. He realized that happiness could be found in the smallest of moments, if only he took the time to notice them. One evening, as Jack made his way home from work, he found himself caught in a sudden downpour. Instead of cursing his luck, he decided to embrace the rain, letting the cool droplets wash away the stress and tension of the day. Laughing and splashing through puddles, he felt an overwhelming sense of freedom and joy wash over him. When Jack finally arrived home, drenched but exhilarated, he was greeted by his loyal companion, a scruffy little dog named Max Max wagged his tail furiously, his eyes sparkling with happiness at Jack's return. In that moment, Jack realized that he was not alone in this world, he had Max, a faithful friend who loved him unconditionally. As Jack sat down to dinner that evening, he reflected on the events of the day. Despite the challenges and hardships he faced, he couldn't deny that life had its moments of beauty and wonder. He had come to realize that happiness was not found in grand gestures or material possessions, but in the simple joys of everyday life. From that day forward, Jack made a conscious effort to savor each moment, to find beauty in the ordinary and joy in the mundane. He no longer saw his life as a series of burdens to bear, but as an adventure waiting to be explored. And as he drifted off to sleep that night, he couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude for the life he had been given. 6. Light in the Darkness In a small town nestled deep in the valley, there was a boy named Lucas. Lucas was born into a poor family, his mother passed away early, and his father had to work all day to support the family. 
Lucas had to take care of himself from a very young age. Although his life was not easy, Lucas always remained optimistic and knew how to enjoy the little things. Every day, Lucas would walk to the outskirts of the town to pick wildflowers. He arranged them into small bouquets and brought them home to decorate. Despite the small house, stepping inside, you would feel a warm space, filled with light from the bouquets Lucas arranged. One day, as Lucas walked along the narrow path, he saw a girl sitting alone under the shade of a tree. The girl seemed very sad, but Lucas noticed a glimmer of hope in her eyes. He approached and sat beside her, sharing his stories and dreams. Before long, they became close friends. Thanks to Lucas, the girl named Sophia's life gradually became brighter. Together, they explored the world around the town, enjoying beautiful moments and new experiences. They blossomed in their own world, helping each other overcome difficulties. Their small town lacked many modern amenities, but they didn't feel deprived. Lucas and Sophia learned to enjoy simple things and cherish peaceful moments together. They knew that life was not just about material possessions but also about sharing love and joy with each other. As Lucas and Sophia grew up, they still held onto their optimistic spirit and compassion. Lucas became a successful writer, penning stories about meaningful lives. Sophia became a talented interior designer, creating warm and beautiful spaces for others. When they reached adulthood, Lucas and Sophia returned to the small town where they grew up. They didn't forget the golden memories and their friends. Although the town was no longer the center of their lives, it remained in their hearts. In conclusion, we see that life is not always complex and difficult. Sometimes, a small glimmer of hope is enough to brighten an entire lifetime. From simple living and close relationships, we can find true happiness and meaning. The key is to learn to enjoy the little things and appreciate what we have because that is the secret to living a life not as bad as we might think. 7. In Voice Peter is the son of a grocery store owner at the end of the street. He often goes to his mother's store to play every day. The store has numerous bills to pay or collect payments that need to be processed or sent to customers. Peter is usually tasked by his mother to take these bills to the post office to be sent out. Doing these tasks makes him feel like he's also become a small business owner. One day, Peter decides to write a bill for his mother, detailing the things she needs to pay him for the help he provides her every day. The next morning, Peter's mother receives the bill, clearly stating that she needs to pay her son for the following tasks. Transporting groceries home, $2. Delivering mail to the post office, $1. Helping with garden maintenance, $2. Being well-behaved and obedient throughout the week, $1. In total, Peter's bill amounts to $6. His mother doesn't say anything about it. During dinner, Peter discovers six coins under his plate, his earnings. He is delighted and about to put the money in his pocket when he notices another bill, this time a payment invoice addressed to him. He is surprised. Peter needs to pay his mother for the following. Living in his mother's happy home for 10 years, $0. Expenses for food, education, and living for 10 years, $0. Care and love provided by his mother whenever he was sick, $0. In total, Peter's debt to his mother is $0. Peter reads the bill over and over again, feeling a deep sense of regret flushing his face. A moment later, he goes to his mother and gently places the six coins back into her purse. 8 Perfect Lives Once upon a time, there was a little girl who always longed for a perfect life. One day, she earnestly prayed to God to grant her everything she desired. She wished for nothing but perfection. And so, the deity appeared before her and said, Child, follow the windy path ahead where you'll find hundreds of millions of small stones. I grant you a period of 365 days to pick the largest stone you can find. The bigger the stone, the more I shall bestow upon you. But remember, once you pass by a stone, you are not allowed to turn back. Therefore, think carefully before choosing your stone. The little girl felt ecstatic and began her journey on the windy path to seek the greatest happiness for her life. However, every time she encountered a large stone along the way, she hesitated and reassured herself that the next stone would be much bigger. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months. Eventually, she realized that she was running out of time and opportunities to pick the larger stones. So, 
she reluctantly picked up a small stone by the roadside. Life is like that too. We constantly seek the perfect life partner, the perfect job, the perfect home, or the perfect car. We fail to realize that we are wasting so much time and missing out on countless opportunities. There's never a perfect moment to express exactly what you want, to be with exactly the right person, or to do exactly the job you desire. So why not live for today and enjoy every moment you have in this life? 9. There were 9 hens and the lies. I had to run to the store right away, my mom said. Tonight, she planned to cook chicken, so naturally, we needed a chicken and a few other things. The store was right near our house, so if I had to go, my mom usually sat right outside the door waiting to drive me back. She'd bring along our red toy wagon. We lived in the mountains, so don't think the store I went to was a supermarket. It was quite small, with only one shopkeeper, but it had a very large refrigerator. Mrs. Bradley, the store owner, usually kept a lot of meat in it to sell, and it took several days to empty it. Our house was tiny, so every day we had to go to the store to buy food. When I got to the store, Mrs. Bradley had sold out of chicken. So, she ran out behind the store and brought out a live hen. She placed the hen on the scale, and it kept clucking and blinking its eyes. I felt like it was staring straight at me, begging for help. I asked Mrs. Bradley, what do we do now? I'll make it into meat. Take it home to your mom, Mrs. Bradley replied calmly. My first lie burst out. No, my mom told you not to kill it. She wants to buy a live chicken. I tried to swallow the lie, but it was bigger than an egg. I nervously tried to act nonchalant. Mrs. Bradley looked at me suspiciously. She knew my mom, and if my mom knew how to make chicken meat, well, that was a whole new story. But then she nodded, tied the chicken's legs back together, and put it in the basket. Then Mrs. Bradley got a few things I needed and put them in the red toy wagon for me to pull. So, I happily went home, holding the basket with the live chicken in one hand and pulling the wagon with the other. My mom was sitting at the door waiting for me. As I got closer to the house, my mom stood up. Oh my God, Mrs. Bradley, what happened? She asked. Does she know that I don't know how to make chicken meat? How am I supposed to deal with a live chicken? My mind was working like a machine, desperately searching for an answer. But lying is like lighting a firework. Once you light the first one, the rest will burn continuously. So I replied, because it's almost closing time, and Mrs. Bradley has something to do. She knows you don't know how to make chicken meat, so what to do with a live chicken? My mind was racing, but I couldn't look my mom in the eye, so I had to look down. Let the chicken go, my mom said. Do you think your dad has ever made chicken meat or anything else? If neither your dad nor I can do it, we have to keep it. Then I happily thought that we would keep the chicken. Mom, I'm going to feed it, I said. My mom sighed and went to the kitchen to get some corn. Mrs. Bradley closed the door, so we probably won't be able to buy anything to feed it. Let's give it this for now. So at that moment, I couldn't believe that I would still have that chicken eight years later, and every time I had to clean the chicken coop that my dad made, it was something I hated very much. But my dad comforted me by saying that it was the price to pay for my lies. My dad even composed a thank you note to read before meals like this. Thank you for the food we have every day, and above all, thank you for the healthy chicken behind the house. It eats better than us. 10. Breaking the Cycle In a small rural town, there lived a family of farmers in a modest house by the river. This family consisted of three generations, the grandparents, parents, and two young sons. Despite their hard work on the fields, their lives were always full of difficulties and stagnation. The family toiled from dawn till dusk every day, yet all their efforts seemed to be in vain. Their farmland yielded little produce, and life became increasingly challenging. They lacked enough food to feed the entire family, and every day was filled with worries about the future. All three generations of this family lived in a sense of despair and hopelessness. They didn't know what to do to improve their situation, and each passing day felt more hopeless than the last. Despite their efforts, they couldn't overcome the hardships, and their lives grew darker with each passing day. One day, while the father was working in the fields, the younger siblings stumbled upon an old box forgotten under a tree. They opened the box, finding within it an old letter and a worn-out journal. 
they hoped that these items would shed light on the cause of the stagnation their family was facing. The journal chronicled the life of their grandfather from childhood to adulthood. Reading through it, they discovered that their grandfather had once dreamt of a better and prosperous life. He had worked diligently, hoping to improve his family's situation. However, all his efforts ended in failure. His farmland didn't yield much produce, and his family faced various financial difficulties. Slowly, despair and hopelessness began to overshadow his life, and he gave up all hope for a better life. Ultimately, their grandfather resigned himself to a life of stagnation and despair. His life influenced the generations that followed in the family, and they continued to live in the same despair and hopelessness that he had experienced. The cause of this stagnation and despair wasn't solely due to material difficulties but also due to the grandfather's state of mind. His hopelessness and despair spread and affected how future generations faced life. The conclusion drawn from this story emphasizes the importance of optimism and hope in overcoming difficulties. Although life may present challenges, hope and belief will help us overcome any obstacles and create a better life for ourselves and future generations, so the video has ended. Throughout today, via the stories shared, I've gleaned numerous valuable life lessons for myself. And how about you? Feel free to comment and share your thoughts with the channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and spread positivity to those around you. Hopefully, you've had moments of relaxation and gained some beneficial insights into life. Looking forward to seeing you again in the next videos. Thank you.